Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and this video is for Bot Sentinel's Christopher Boozy. Mr. Boozy, I've tried in the past to have a civil conversation with you about your research. You shot me down. You told me I'm not a real network. Well, now I see that you're willing to talk to LawTube. I guess you're in talks with Law & Lumber. You had a whole tiff with all of LawTube these past few days, including Nate, the lawyer who is here with us now. And I thought it would be time to finally really address some of these concerns, uh, Mr. Boozy. Uh, so please, Christopher, we are going to be live today at 1.30 to 3.30. I'm going to send you an invite from my Popcorn Planet account uh, and my Twitter. I, you're blocking my other one for some reason. Uh, we're going to send you, and I hope you guys can help watch this report and share it so we can actually get Christopher to address these concerns because you went off on a, all of LawTube this weekend, and uh, man, people in glass house, houses should not be the first to throw stones uh, because I got Steph the Alter Nerd and I got Nate the Lawyer both here. Welcome, both of you. Always a pleasure to have your back. Uh, both of you guys uh, went after Mr. Booz this weekend. I'd like to try to be the civil voice reason and get him to come in here and maybe have a real conversation. All you are obviously welcome as well. Uh, but Steph, we're going to get to you. Welcome, Steph. Good to see you. You had a very viral thread this weekend because you stumbled upon something that seems Mr. Boozy, who runs Bot Sentinel, a research firm online, uh, might be breaking some serious laws. Nate, you also were going into sort of his bankruptcy history, et cetera, which prompted him to come after you online this weekend in some of the most glorious, uh, I feel like face slapping moments. I don't know what Boozy was thinking. I want to start with you though, Nate, because this was pretty, pretty shocking to see what he was doing. Can you set up what happened with Mr. Boozy this weekend? Well, it seems like Mr. Boozy believed that he can take down all of the lawyers on, on law too. So he's just going after one at a time. Now what happens is after he put out the report, essentially going after Tug, he misquoted Tug horribly. So for instance, Tug would say something like, hello, in the first minute of a live stream. And then six hours later, he would say, uh, you know, she has bad teeth. And the next thing you know, they would put it all together like he said it right behind it. And he's like, no, he said that six hours later. So the context in which he was, they were speaking was was way off. So Ian said, Ian. Yeah, did a props video to showing, Runkle like, the Bay for everybody goes. Go support Runkle the Bay. Sorry to interrupt, but I want to plug Ian too because yeah, I have a thread here that really did it well, and I watched Ian's video. is fantastic, Re really great work, Ian. But he basically proved to sum up because I have it here. He misled everybody in this quote. This is what the yes. quote read, and in research, that's a big deal. He didn't put the dot 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 to show that this was spread out over six hours is what it was. And then when pushed and pressed because it was improper research, it looked awful. I didn't realize he actually then went and did correct it and didn't make a note that he corrected the evidence, which is really unethical as research goes. Correct, Nate? A stealth edit. Yeah, that, that's you. If you're going to edit something that you've already put out there, you have to put edit on on this date and explain at least why you're editing it. So, so this stealth edit so, is definitely not so good. So, where I, I I jumped to your tweet early, but thank you for setting that up. So he was going after everybody. He started with Tug. He's really been going after Tug, and it's the, the dumbest research where Tug's just, I feel like, a afterthought and clearly like old Meghan Markle channels he's been targeting for a long time, yeah. but he's been hyping it as a sort of anti-Amber uh, report. Tug's involvement in his one page made no sense in the context of everything else. Do you feel like maybe he's getting a little bummed that the reaction to his you know report isn't what he wanted? Well, that, I don't think, I think he's looking to get fame through you know, like these these media entities using his research, right? Because it to me, it's it's pretty clear they don't know how he's even coming to any of these conclusions. He's just saying it, and they're trusting what he's saying. But as soon as you, as soon as you just, it's not even look deep into it. As soon as you just look at the first couple of lines, you already know there's there's major issues, and not only the philosophy, but the you know how these numbers and these conclusions are, are being generated based on information that he's not even publishing. So yeah, that you know it's it's a serious issue. If this person's being held to be credible by Rolling Stone and by the Washington Post, then then how are we coming to that? Yeah, and, and again, we're, we're going to talk about that later today in our live as well. Uh, but Taylor Lorenz, who's become a fan of Boozy, is out there, uh, you know, reporting things to not much uh, attention. Doesn't seem like people really want to hear about Taylor's 
thoughts on this issue because they're just, they're not correct. None of these people are correct. The fact that she's using this research is, is questionable because again, that's what I want to talk about, Christopher. There's a lot of unethical questions I have. You never want to seem to address them. You just want to target people yourselves and then, you know, send your bots or whatever after them, block them and then misdirect everybody. So you can't actually follow the conversation. Why do you seem to be so afraid of a civil conversation, Christopher? I, I don't know. And please everybody leave him alone. I'm not asking you to target him or attack him, but because he's blocking me, please politely as I, Guys, as politely as you can, say, Mr. Boozy, Andy would like to have a civil conversation with you. I'd love to see those tweets so we can show him. We are civil, you know, nice people here. But, Nate, things sure. got things didn't get civil here. Uh, things got really gross as we jumped on this. And I, I, I this, this disgusting sort of attack that he came after you because you did start reporting on him. You very fairly and correctly were pointing some things out online. And this is what he put out there. Uh, cause he guess I just got angry. He's, he, he, atta I, by his logic, this is exactly what I feel like he's sort of saying others are doing. No. Yes. Well, yeah, he, he, he did it. But the interesting part is that his own fans, his own followers rejected this. And that's why he had to delete this tweet. And it's the no funny thing there. is, is that, um, he deleted all the tweets addressing me because when the harassment that he, so everybody understands what Boozy's game is. He throws out all these tweets to harass me. And then when I respond to the harassing tweets, then what he does is he deletes all of his tweets and then reports my tweets as if they're in a vacuum. And then Twitter only sees my stuff and then they, they'll block you, they'll kind of block you based on just, oh, we, we see you've done this. And you're like, well, you're not addressing anything I responded to. The fact that he docks me and he has my real name and everything out there, isn't that a violation? Oh, well, we don't see the tweet. That's because he deletes it. So he thinks he's smart. He'll put, he'll like, he'll put something else like this out. If it's trouble problematic, then he'll remove it to avoid and then he, the Twitter bots. He got a lot of even his own fan base sort of really got upset because he was just trying to defend what he did here. Uh, just coming after. I just don't even want to read all this nonsense. It's so offensive to me and just uh, grasping uh, saying that Nate's chasing clout and having a mental crisis. <laughs> which is just what what on earth is he talking about? And then the reason why is because he's trying this was this what your intentions were? You were trying to shame him because his family went through hell for months because of an unscrupulous landlord. And then he <laughs> proceeds to put remind everybody of this thread. I wrote a thread about my family's terrific experience with moving and how we were scammed and then made to feel as if we were overreacting. No matter how successful people of color become, there's still no one still people who believe they can whip us into submission. I mean, like even his own fans were like, what are, what is this connection? What are you doing? Nate, was that, that was clearly what you were doing. You were clearly being the slave master here. To that's Mr. right. Boozy. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm the white slave master, unfortunately, <laughs> but that's, but the, the, the only issue that he, that he had was the fact of the matter is, is that he's holding himself out here to try to stop disinformation and be this, this beacon of truth. But the thing is you can't, lie on public documents and mislead public officials. And then when people say, hey, this seems a little iffy, the fact that your company started in 2018 and you filed for bankruptcy in 2019, but don't put the company on the bankruptcy, that makes, that's like, you know, that, that seems a little fishy. And just asking about it seems to have pissed him off to no end. <laughs> Oh, in fact, so, teasing, Nate will be live right after the stream. He's probably live right as you're watching this. Uh, and you are going to be looking into this a little further, aren't you, Nate? Well, what I what I did was say, you know, I'm not I can't I can't accuse anyone of anything. Right. I'm not accusing him of actually doing it. But what I want to do is I would like the professionals to go over the information that I've gathered, because I think it's mm. very simple. Right. Company started on day X. Bankruptcy filed on day Y. Bank companies should be on bankruptcy filing. They're not. So let the FBI, the Justice Department, deal with it. So they have a process in which you report things like this. So I want to do two things because I'm a legal educator. I want to educate people on the process in case they know things this that. So that nothing, nothing may even come of this, right? They may not even respond. But as long as you just know in case. How, just to, in case. How, to, how to file. Yeah, just in case. You may know somebody. And I why not actually file it? Yeah, why not actually it's, file an alleged bankruptcy fraud note, uh, which exactly. you guys can watch Nate do live? I'm, do you think Christopher's going to be happy to hear that you're doing this? Um, well, I'm not doing anything illegal or, you know, it's just I'm just being a concerned citizen and, you know, saying, hey, 
This is something that I think is concerning and should be reported, you know, even if even if nothing comes of it. Right. Because, again, we just want to be fair to the yes. the, to the facts that we have. Right. Just um, want to be yeah. fair. Want to protect people just in case he's got nothing to hide, I would think. So no, if anything, he should be hide. applauding you. We sh right, Christopher? Yeah. Applaud Nate for, <laughs> for putting this report out there to confirm that there's nothing suspicious. Is how I see it. So uh, there it is. Um, again, the reason all this is important is because he's he is he has people still in his Rolodex. You know, we're taking these reports as factual. He doesn't want to ask any questions. He, he keeps forgetting to remind people that he was paid by Amber, etc. Uh, there, there's a lot of questionable stuff, but it was just really interesting to see him think he could tackle LawTube. Even like he went after Nick Rakita. Like, <laughs> what? What are you doing, dude? Like. What, what? Like you really want to go toe to toe with Nick on all this issue? It was shocking. There's there are threads, guys. There's accounts. You know, Boozy exposed, Bot Sentinel exposed. There's a lot of stuff. And now you know, and Tug has done a lot as well uh, yeah. as just sort of really hammering this guy for as un, uh, as untrustworthy that the, uh, the, the the data doesn't seem genuine. The data seems biased. Uh, and he doesn't want to answer any questions. So again, Christopher, why don't you come on? Let's have a conversation about all this. Uh, you know, if you got nothing to hide, you wouldn't take it, you know, keep running away is what it sort of seems like to me. <laughs> Steph, because there's another issue. I want to get Steph now in the conversation. You have another concern, correct? Because uh, as I saw, you did a big tweet uh, that thank God a lot of people have been supporting. And please go over to Steph the Alternate and get this one shared as well, because you have your own beef with uh, Christopher. Can you Can you elaborate a little bit further? Yeah, so on his website, um, under the facts, the FAQs, um, he has a question that says, how can I remove uh, my Twitter handle from your website? And he literally turns around uh, at the end and it states, please do not contact us to remove your Twitter handle or alter your score. Now, it's please do not contact us to remove your Twitter handle. That is the potential issue because we have laws over on this side at Pond. If you're part of the European Union, it's called GDPR law. Uh, and if you're in the UK, it's the Data Protection Act of 2018. And they mirror each other, okay? In those laws, it is very specific. It states that when you are handling data from users that are based in the UK or the European Union, that you must have a mechanism in place for them to go to you to ask for your information to be deleted and for it to be deleted. Mm. It's as simple as that. Even with him being based in America, um, I assume he's US based, because he's still collecting and processing individuals that are based inside the EU and the UK, he is still required to comply with GDPR and the UK's version, the Data Protection Act of 2018. And so this is where potentially he may actually be possibly breaking international law because GDPR and our own version is extremely clear on this. So... Um, I've tried to contact Mr. Boozy. I've DM'd him. Uh, no response. And that was a couple of months back. Uh, and now, more recently, I've contacted Twitter and I've given them 30 days. And so after which point, um, if I do not receive a response back and a satisfactory resolution to all of this, um, then I'm going to the Information Commissioner's office, uh, by which point, what could Mr. Christopher Boozy win? Well, if he is found to be contravening uh, the international law that I'm stating here, uh, he could be fined up to 20 million euros or up to 4% of his global annual turnover, whichever is greater. Ooh. Hmm. Well, so it's interesting stuff because I saw the thread here, you know, creating videos or tweets about him won't move the needle. They'll just continue to put those features, publish reports, journalists, et cetera, use that data illegally, allegedly, anything. So Twitter accounts and YouTube channels will get shut down. You'll just have to cope. I don't like this. I feel like he should be, uh, you know, uh, able to be tra transparent with everything, answer our questions. He doesn't seem to want to, he just wants to be a bully. In fact, he's out there saying to all the toxic content creators, which I guess I fall in that 
well, that whole too, because I've made more than two Amber videos. Therefore, he labels me as someone who's, you know, harassing her. Uh, we're yeah. going to have to go through some things. Well, Christopher, I got an issue with that. What, what makes you the judge, jury, and executioner? I, I don't understand this. Uh, and why are you so quick to delete, to target yourself? I feel like you need to have some more public conversations and quit being such a bully online. So can we have that civil conversation? Steph, Nate, we're all here. We're ready to have it. We'll be here again from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. here. If you'd like to reach out, unblock me. And I'll unblock you right now because I block anybody who blocks me. I don't want them to spy on me. You know what I mean, Nate and Steph? Yeah, it doesn't yeah, feel yeah. fair. If someone blocks me, they get an immediate block back because, no, you don't get to spy on me. You can still view tweets if you block someone. Uh, but I will unblock you now. And if you'd like to hit me up and come during that period or a later period, reach out and let us know. I'd love to have a civil dialogue. And, guys, leave Christopher alone. Please, I ask you, if anything, politely let him know that we'll be live and we'd like to speak to him. And he has an open invite here. Use a Mr. Mr. Boozy for today. Uh, just so we can prove that we are, oh, we can all be boozy here. <laughs> Boo boozy. <laughs> <laughs> boozy, boozy, uh, boozy. They all boozy. There it is. Uh, so Christopher, don't prove, don't be a bozo. Be a, a Mr. Boozy today. Let's have a nice civil conversation. And in the meanwhile, make sure you go check out Nate, the lawyer and his stream where he's going to educate you guys on how you can file a uh, bankruptcy fraud farm, as well as, report one allegedly just in just in case right christopher this should be a good thing you should have nothing to hide this shouldn't be a worry so we'll see what happens here uh if you'd like to talk to nate about that or any of us you can and please also follow up with steph regarding this issue because this is very questionable aside from all the other issues i have i felt like these two were pretty fair issues to alert you of so i hope we can hear from him go support steph the alternate on twitter and youtube nate yeah. the lawyer on twitter and youtube and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys back uh, here soon. Make sure you subscribe to us all. Hit that bell for all alerts. Smash that like button. Uh, never fear truth. That's the motto here. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Always a pleasure to talk to you. We will see you guys live today at, yes, 1.30. No, I'm not going to be Andy time. I'll be on time. 1.30 <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. Join us there. I hope to see you too, Christopher.